Francisco Vasquez de Coronado y Luján Spanish pronunciation, Fan Theta Isco Beta A Theta K Theta E Cuneo, 1510 22 September 1554 was a Spanish conquistador and explorer who led a large expedition from Mexico to present day Kansas through parts of the southwestern United States between 1540 and 1542. Vasquez de Coronado had hoped to reach the cities of Cibola, often referred to now as the mythical Seven Cities of Gold, which is a term not invented until American Gold Rush days in the 1800s. His expedition marked the first European sightings of the Grand Canyon and the Colorado River, among other landmarks. His name is often anglicized as Vasquez de Coronado. Topic: <laughs> Early Life. Topic. Vasquez de Coronado was born into a noble family in Salamanca, Spain, in 1510 as the second son of Juan Vasquez de Coronado y Sosa de Ulloa and Isabel de Lujan. Juan Vasquez held various positions in the administration of the recently captured Emirate of Granada under Inigo López de Mendoza, its first Spanish governor. Francisco Vasquez de Coronado went to New Spain, present-day Mexico, in 1535 at about age 25, in the entourage of its first viceroy, Antonio de Mendoza, the son of his father's patron and Vasquez de Coronado's personal friend. In New Spain, he married 12-year-old Beatriz de Estrada, called the Saint. La Santa, sister of Leonor de Estrada, ancestor of the de Alvarado family and daughter of treasurer and governor Alonso de Estrada y Hidalgo, Lord of Picón, and wife Marina Flores Gutierrez de la Caballeria, from a converso Jewish family. Vasquez de Coronado inherited a large portion of a Mexican encomendero estate through Beatriz and had eight children by her. <laughs> Expedition Topic. Topic. Preparation Topic. Vasquez de Coronado was the governor of the Kingdom of Nueva Galicia, New Galicia a province of New Spain located northwest of Mexico and comprising the contemporary Mexican states of Jalisco, Sinaloa and Nayarit. In 1539, he dispatched Friar Marcos de Niza and Estevanico more properly known as Estevan, a survivor of the Narvaez expedition, on an expedition north from Compostela toward present-day New Mexico. When de Niza returned, he told of a city of vast wealth, a golden city called Cibola, whose Zuni residents were assumed to have killed Estevan. Though he did not claim to have entered the city of Cibola, he mentioned that it stood on a high hill and that it appeared wealthy and as large as Mexico City. Vasquez de Coronado assembled an expedition with two components. One component carried the bulk of the expedition's supplies, traveling via the Guadalupe River under the leadership of Hernando de Alarcón. The other component traveled by land, along the trail on which Friar Marcos de Niza had followed Esteban. Vasquez de Coronado and Viceroy Antonio de Mendoza invested large sums of their own money in the venture. Mendoza appointed Vasquez de Coronado the commander of the expedition, with the mission to find the mythical seven cities of gold. This is the reason he pawned his wife's estates and was lent 70,000 pesos. In the autumn of 1539, Mendoza ordered Melchior Diaz, commander of the Spanish outpost at San Miguel de Culiacán, to investigate Friar de Niza. Findings, and on November 17, 1539, Diaz departed for Cibola with fifteen horsemen. At the ruins of Chichilticoli, he turned around because of snows and fierce winds from across the wilderness. Diaz had encountered Vasquez de Coronado before he had departed San Miguel de Culiacán, and reported that initial investigations into Friar Deniza's report disproved the existence of the bountiful land he had described. Diaz's report was delivered to Viceroy Mendoza on March 20, 1540. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Expedition. Topic: 
Vasquez de Coronado set out from Compostela on February 23, 1540, at the head of a much larger expedition composed of about 400 European men-at-arms mostly Spaniards, 1,300 to 2,000 Mexican Indian allies, four Franciscan friars the most notable of whom were Juan de Padilla and the newly appointed provincial superior of the Franciscan order in the New World, Marcos de Niza, and several slaves, both natives and Africans. Many other family members and servants also joined the party. He followed the Sinaloan coast northward, keeping the Gulf of California on his left to the west until he reached the northernmost Spanish settlement in Mexico, San Miguel de Culiacán, about March 28, 1540, whereupon he rested his expedition before they began trekking the inland trail. Aside from his mission to verify Friar Deniza, S. Report, Melchior Diaz had also taken notice of the forage and food situation along the trail, and reported that the land along the route would not be able to support a large concentrated body of soldiers and animals. Vasquez de Coronado, therefore, decided to divide his expedition into small groups and time their departures so that grazing lands and water holes along the trail could recover. At intervals along the trail, Vasquez de Coronado established camps and stationed garrisons of soldiers to keep the supply route open. For example, in September 1540, Melchior Diaz, along with 70 or 80 of the weakest and least reliable men in Vasquez de Coronado, S army remained at the town of San Hieronimo in the valley of Corazones or Hearts. Once the scouting and planning was done, Vasquez de Coronado led the first group of soldiers up the trail. They were horsemen and foot soldiers who were able to travel quickly, while the main bulk of the expedition would set out later. After leaving Culiacán on April 22, 1540, Vasquez de Coronado followed the coast, bearing off to the left, as Moda Padilla says, by an extremely rough way, to the Sinaloa River. The configuration of the country made it necessary to follow the river valley until he could find a passage across the mountains to the course of the Yaqui River. He traveled alongside this stream for some distance, then crossed to the Rio Sonora, which he followed nearly to its source before a pass was discovered. On the southern side of the mountains he found a stream he called the Nexpa, which may have been either the Santa Cruz or the San Pedro in modern Arizona of modern maps, most likely the northward flowing San Pedro River. The party followed this river valley until they reached the edge of the wilderness, where, as Friar Marcos had described it to them, they found Chichilticoli. Chichilticoli is in southern Arizona in the Sulphur Springs Valley, within the bend of the Dos Cabezas and Chiricahua Mountains. This fits the Chronicle of Laos Deo description, which reports that, at Chichilticoli the country changes its character again and the spiky vegetation ceases. The reason is that, the mountain chain changes its direction at the same time that the coast does. Here they had to cross and pass the mountains in order to get into the level country. Their Vasquez de Coronado met a crushing disappointment. Cibola was nothing like the great golden city that Deniza had described. Instead, it was just a village of simple pueblos constructed by the Zuni Native Americans. The soldiers were upset with Deniza for his mendacious imagination, so Vasquez de Coronado sent him back south to New Spain in disgrace. Despite what is shown in the accompanying map, on the ground research by Nugent Brasher beginning in 2005 revealed evidence that Vasquez de Coronado traveled north between Chichilticoli and Zuni primarily on the future New Mexico side of the state line, not the Arizona side as has been thought by historians since the 1940s. Also, most scholars believe Quivira was about 30 miles east of the Great Bend of the Arkansas River, ending about 20 miles west-southwest of the location depicted on the map, with Quivira being mostly on tributaries of the Arkansas River instead of directly on the Kansas River. For details, see the heading below. Location of Quivira <laughs> Conquest of Cibola Vasquez de Coronado traveled north on one side or the other of today's Arizona-New Mexico state line, and from the headwaters of the Little Colorado River, he continued on until he came to the Zuni River. He followed the Zuni until he found the region inhabited by the Zuni people. The members of the expedition were almost starving and demanded entrance into the village of Hawica of which the preferred Zuni word is Haaku. The natives refused, denying the expedition entrance to the village. Vasquez de Coronado and his expeditionaries attacked the Zunis. 
The ensuing skirmish constituted the extent of what can be called the Spanish conquest of Cibola. During the battle, Vasquez de Coronado was injured. He never personally led his men at arms in any subsequent battles. During the weeks that the expedition stayed at Zuni, he sent out several scouting expeditions. The first scouting expedition was led by Pedro de Tovar. This expedition headed northwest to the Hopi villages, which they recorded as Tusian. Upon arrival, the Spanish were also denied entrance to the village that they came across and, once again, resorted to using force to enter. Materially, the Hopi region was just as poor as the Zuni in precious metals, but the Spaniards did learn that a large river the Colorado lay to the west. Topic. Exploration of the Colorado River Topic. Three leaders affiliated with the Vasquez de Coronado expedition were able to reach the Colorado River. The first was Hernando de Alarcón, then Melchior Díaz and lastly García López de Cardenas. Alarcón's fleet was tasked to carry supplies and to establish contact with the main body of Vasquez de Coronado's expedition but was unable to do so because of the extreme distance to Cibola. He traveled up the Sea of Cortés and then the Colorado River. In this exploration, he hauled some supplies for Vasquez de Coronado, but eventually, he buried them with a note in a bottle. Melchior Diaz was sent down from Cibola by Vasquez de Coronado to take charge of the camp of Corazones and to establish contact with the fleet. Soon after arriving at the camp he set out from the valley of Corazones in Sonora and traveled overland in a north, northwesterly direction until he arrived at the junction of the Colorado River and Gila River. There the local natives, probably the Cocomaricopa see Seymour 2007b, told him that Alarcon's sailors had buried supplies and left a note in a bottle. The supplies were retrieved, and the note stated that Alarcoan's men had rowed up the river as far as they could, searching in vain for the Vasquez de Coronado expedition. They had given up and decided to return to their departure point because worms were eating holes in their boats. Diaz named the river the Firebrand Tizen River, because the natives in the area used firebrands to keep their bodies warm in the winter. Diaz died on the trip back to the camp in the valley of the Corazones. While at Hawica, Vasquez de Coronado sent another scouting expedition overland to find the Colorado River, led by Don Garcia López de Cardenas. The expedition returned to Hopi territory to acquire scouts and supplies. Members of Cardenas S party eventually reached the south rim of the Grand Canyon, where they could see the Colorado River thousands of feet below, becoming the first Europeans to do so. After trying and failing to climb down into the canyon to reach the river, the expedition reported that they would not be able to use the Colorado River to link up with Hernando de Alarcoan's fleet. After this, the main body of the expedition began its journey to the next populated center of Pueblos, along another large river to the east, the Rio Grande in New Mexico. Topic. Teague War Hernando de Alvarado was sent to the east, and found several villages around the Rio Grande. Vasquez de Coronado had one commandeered for his winter quarters, Cufor, which is across the river from present-day Bernalillo near Albuquerque, New Mexico. During the winter of 1540-41, his army found themselves in conflict with the Rio Grande natives, which led to the brutal Teague War. This war resulted in the destruction of the Teague Pueblos and the deaths of hundreds of Native Americans. Topic. Search for Quivira. Topic. From an Indian the Spanish called the Turk. El Turco, Vasquez de Coronado heard of a wealthy civilization called Quivira far to the east. In spring 1541 he led his army and priests and Indian allies onto the Great Plains to search for Quivira. The Turk was probably either a Wichita or a Pawnee and his intention seems to have been to lead Vasquez de Coronado astray and hope that he got lost in the wilderness. With the Turk guiding him, Vasquez de Coronado and his army might have crossed the flat and featureless steppe called the Llano Estacado in the Texas Panhandle and eastern New Mexico, passing through the present-day communities of Hereford and Canadian. The Spanish were awed by the Llano. The country they the buffalo, traveled over was so smooth that if one looked at them the sky could be seen between their legs. 
Men and horses became lost in the featureless plain, and Vasquez de Coronado felt like he had been swallowed up by the sea. On the Llano, Vasquez de Coronado encountered vast herds of bison the American buffalo. I found such a quantity of cows that it is impossible to number them, for while I was journeying through these plains, there was not a day that I lost sight of them. Quarechos and Tias Topic. Vasquez de Coronado found a settlement of people he called Quarechos. The Quarechos were not awed or impressed by the Spanish, their weapons, and their big dogs, horses. They did nothing unusual when they saw our army, except to come out of their tents to look at us, after which they came to talk to the advance guard, and asked who we were. As Vasquez de Coronado described them, the Quarechos were nomads, following the buffalo herds on the plains. The Quarechos were numerous. Chroniclers mentioned one settlement of 200 tipis, which implies a population of more than 1,000 people living together for at least part of the year. Authorities agree that the Quarechos were Apache Indians. Vasquez de Coronado left the Quarechos behind and continued southeast in the direction in which the Turk told him that Quivira was located. He and his army descended off the tabletop of the Llano Estacado into the Caprock Canyon country. He soon met with another group of Indians, the Tias, enemies of the Quarechos. The Tias, like the Quarechos, were numerous and buffalo hunters, although they had additional resources. The canyons they inhabited had trees and flowing streams and they grew or foraged for beans, but not corn. The Spanish, however, did note the presence of mulberries, roses, grapes, walnuts, and plums. An intriguing event was Vasquez de Coronado's meeting among the Tias, an old blind bearded man who said that he had met many days before, four others like us. He was probably talking about Cabeza de Vaca, who with Esteban and two other Spanish survivors of the Narvaez expedition to Florida made his way across southern Texas six years before Vasquez de Coronado. Scholars differ in their opinions as to which historical Indian group were the Tias. A plurality believe they were Caddoan speakers and related to the Wichita. The place where Vasquez de Coronado found the Tias has also been debated. The mystery may have been cleared up to the satisfaction of some by the discovery of a likely Vasquez de Coronado campsite. While Vasquez de Coronado was in the canyon country, his army suffered one of the violent climatic events so common on the plains. A tempest came up one afternoon with a very high wind and hail. The hail broke many tents and tattered many helmets, and wounded many of the horses, and broke all the crockery of the army, and the gourds which was no small loss. In 1993, Jimmy Owens found crossbow points in Blanco Canyon in Crosby County, Texas, near the town of Floydada in Floyd County. Archaeologists subsequently searched the site and found pottery sherds, more than 40 crossbow points, and dozens of horseshoe nails of Spanish manufacture, plus a Mexican-style stone blade. This find strengthens the evidence that Vasquez de Coronado found the Tias in Blanco Canyon. Topic. Quivira. Topic. Another guide, probably Pawnee and named Isapete, and probably Tias as well told Vasquez de Coronado that he was going in the wrong direction, saying Quivira lay to the north. By this time, Vasquez de Coronado seems to have lost his confidence that fortune awaited him. He sent most of his expedition back to New Mexico and continued with only 40 Spanish soldiers and priests and an unknown number of Indian soldiers, servants, and guides. Vasquez de Coronado, thus, dedicated himself to a reconnaissance rather than a mission of conquest. After more than thirty days' journey, Vasquez de Coronado found a river larger than any he had seen before. This was the Arkansas, probably a few miles east of present-day Dodge City, Kansas. The Spaniards and their Indian allies followed the Arkansas northeast for three days and found Quiverans hunting buffalo. The Indians greeted the Spanish with wonderment and fear but calmed down when one of Vasquez de Coronado's guides addressed them in their own language. Vasquez de Coronado reached Quivira itself after a few more days of traveling. He found Quivira, well settled, along good river bottoms, although without much water, and good streams which flow into another. Vasquez de Coronado believed that there were 25 settlements in Quivira. Both men and women Quiverans were nearly naked. Vasquez de Coronado was impressed with the size of the Quiverans and all the other Indians he met. 
They were, "...large people of very good build." Vasquez de Coronado spent 25 days among the Quiverans trying to learn of richer kingdoms just over the horizon. He found nothing but straw-thatched villages of up to 200 houses and fields containing corn, beans, and squash. A copper pendant was the only evidence of wealth he discovered. The Quiverans were almost certainly the ancestors of the Wichita people. Vasquez de Coronado was escorted to the further edge of Quivira, called Tabas, where the neighboring land of Harahi began. He summoned the Lord of Harahi, who, with 200 followers, came to meet with the Spanish. He was disappointed. The Harahi Indians were all naked, with bows, and some sort of things on their heads, and their privy parts slightly covered. They were not the wealthy people Vasquez de Coronado sought. Disappointed, he returned to New Mexico. Before leaving Quivira, Vasquez de Coronado ordered the Turk garroted. The Turk is regarded as an Indian hero in a display at Albuquerque's Indian Pueblo Cultural Center because he led Vasquez de Coronado onto the Great Plains and thus relieved the beleaguered pueblos of Spanish depredations for at least a few months. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Location of Quivira, Tabas, and Harahi. Topic. Archaeological evidence suggests that Quivira was in central Kansas with the westernmost village near the small town of Lyons on Cow Creek, extending 20 miles east to the Little Arkansas River, and north another 20 miles to the town of Lindsburg on a tributary of the Smoky Hill River. Tabas was likely on the Smoky Hill River. Archaeologists have found numerous 16th-century sites in these areas that probably include some of the settlements visited by Vasquez de Coronado. At Harahi was a river, with more water and more inhabitants than the other." This sounds as if Vasquez de Coronado may have reached the Smoky Hill River near Salina or Abilene. It is a larger river than either Cow Creek or the Little Arkansas and is located at roughly the 25-league distance from Lyons that Vasquez de Coronado said he traveled in Quivira. The people of Harahi seem Caddoan, because, "...it was the same sort of a place, with settlements like these, and of about the same size." as Quivira. They were probably the ancestors of the Pawnee. Expedition end Topic. Vasquez de Coronado returned to the Teague province in New Mexico from Quivira and was badly injured in a fall from his horse, after the winter was over, according to the chronicler Castañeda, probably in March 1542. During a long convalescence, he and his expeditionaries decided to return to New Spain Mexico. Vasquez de Coronado and his expedition departed New Mexico in early April 1542, leaving behind two friars. His expedition had been a failure. Although he remained governor of Nueva Galicia until 1544, the expedition forced him into bankruptcy and resulted in charges of war crimes being brought against him and his field master, Cardenas. Vasquez de Coronado was cleared by his friends on the Audiencia, but Cardenas was convicted in Spain of basically the same charges by the Council of the Indies. Vasquez de Coronado remained in Mexico City, where he died of an infectious disease on September 22, 1554. He was buried under the altar of the Church of Santo Domingo in Mexico City. Vasquez de Coronado caused a large loss of life among the Puebloans, both from the battles he fought with them in the Teague War and from the demands for food and clothing that he levied on their fragile economies. However, 39 years later, when the Spanish again visited the southwestern United States, they found little evidence that Vasquez de Coronado had any lasting cultural influences on the Indians except for their surprise at seeing several light skinned and light haired Puebloans. See, the Chamuscado and Rodriguez expedition and Antonio de Espejo. Topic. Legacy Topic. In 1952, the United States established Coronado National Memorial near Sierra Vista, Arizona to commemorate his expedition. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade references the Cross of Coronado. According to the film, this gold cross, discovered in a Utah cave system, was given to Vasquez de Coronado by Hernán Cortés in 1521. Such an event never happened because Vasquez de Coronado would have been 11 or 12 years old in 1521 and still living in Spain. In addition, when Indy captures the cross from robbers aboard a ship off the coast of Portugal, the ship can be seen to be named the Coronado. 
In 1992, underground found footage filmmaker Craig Baldwin made the film, Oh No Coronado, detailing the expedition of Vasquez de Coronado through the use of recycled images from westerns, conquest films, and the Lone Ranger television series. The song Hitchin, to Quivera from independent singer songwriter Tyler Jakes. S2016 album Mojo Suicide is based on the story of Vasquez de Coronado's expedition. The song Coronado and the Turk from singer-songwriter Steve Tilston. S 1992 album of Moore and Mesa is based on the story of Vasquez de Coronado's expedition. There is a large hill just northwest of Lindsberg, Kansas, that is called Coronado Heights. The former owner of the land built a small castle atop the hill to commemorate Vasquez de Coronado's 1541 visit to the area. The castle and the area around it is now a public camping and recreation area. The soft sandstone rocks at the peak of the hill are covered in the names of past visitors to the area. Coronado High Schools in Lubbock, Texas, El Paso, Texas, Colorado Springs, Colorado, and Scottsdale, Arizona, were named for Vasquez de Coronado. Because a don is a name for a Spanish nobleman, the Coronado Don became the school mascot in Scottsdale. Bernalillo, New Mexico, calls itself the City of Coronado because he stayed there for two winters. Coronado Center, a two-story indoor shopping mall in Albuquerque, New Mexico is named after Vasquez de Coronado. Coronado Road in Phoenix, Arizona, was named after Vasquez de Coronado. Similarly, Interstate 40 through Albuquerque has been named the Coronado Freeway. Coronado, California is not named after Francisco Vasquez de Coronado, but is named after Coronado Islands, which were named in 1602 by Sebastián Vizcaíno who called them Los Cuatro Coronados the four crowned ones to honor four martyrs. <laughs> Ancestors Topic. References Topic. Winship, George Parker, translator and editor. The Journey of Coronado 1540-1542. Golden, C.O., Fulcrum Publishing, 1990. Introduction by Donald C. Cutter. ISBN 1-55591-066-1. Further reading Topic. Blakesley, D.J., R. Flint, and J.T. Hughes 1997. Una Barranca Grande, Recent Archaeological Evidence and a Discussion of Its Place in the Coronado Route. In the Coronado Expedition to Terra Nueva. E.D.'s, R. and S. Flint, University of Colorado Press, Niwot. Bolton, Herbert Eugene, 1949, Coronado, Night of Pueblos and Plains, New York, Whittlesey, Albuquerque, University of New Mexico Press, ebook at Questia.com. Bolton, Herbert E., 1949, Coronado on the Turquoise Trail, Night of Pueblos and Plains. Coronado Cuarto Centennial Publications, 1540-1940, Volume 1. University of New Mexico Press, Albuquerque. Reprinted in 1949 jointly with Whittlesey House, New York, under the title Coronado, Night of Pueblos and Plains. Bolton, H. E. 1960, Rim of Christendom. Russell and Russell, New York. Bolton, Herbert E. 1921, the Spanish Borderlands, a Chronicle of Old Florida and the Southwest. Chronicles of America Series, Vol. 23. Yale University Press, New Haven. Castañeda, Pedro de, 1990 The Journey of Coronado. Translated with an extensive introduction by George Parker Winship, Modern Introduction, Donald C. Cutter, The Journey of Coronado, Fulcrum Publishing, Hardcover, 233 pages, ISBN 1-55591-066-1 Online at PBS, The West Chávez, F. R. Angelico, OFM Coronado's Friars, Academy of American Franciscan History, Washington, D.C. Day, Arthur Grove. 1981 Coronado's Quest, The Discovery of the Southwestern States Berkeley, University of California Press, 1940, RPT, Westport, Connecticut, Greenwood Press, 1981, ISBN 0-313-23207-5. Ebook at Questia.com 
Devoto, Bernard, 1952 The Course of Empire. Houghton, Mifflin, Boston. Duffin, W., and Hartman, W. K. The Seventy-Six Ranch Ruin and the Location of Chichiltecal. In the Coronado Expedition to Tierra Nueva, the 1540–1542 route across the southwest. E. Dees, Richard Flint and Shirley Cushing Flint. University Press of Colorado, Niwot. 1997 The Coronado Expedition to Tierra Nueva, the 1540-1542 route across the southwest, edited by Richard Flint and Shirley Cushing Flint. University Press of Colorado, Niwot. Flint, Richard and Shirley Cushing Flint, 1993. Coronado's Crosses, Route Markers Used by the Coronado Expedition. Journal of the Southwest 35 2, 1993, 207-216. 2003 The Coronado Expedition from the Distance of 460 Years. University of New Mexico Press, Albuquerque 2005 Documents of the Coronado Expedition, 1539-1541, they were not familiar with His Majesty nor did they wish to be his subjects. Southern Methodist University Press, Dallas. Forbes, Jack D. 1960 Apache, Navajo, and Spaniard. University of Oklahoma Press, Norman. Hammond, George P. 1940, Coronado's Seven Cities. United States Coronado Exposition Commission, Albuquerque. Hammond, George P., and Edgar R. Goad, 1938 The Adventure of Don Francisco Vazquez de Coronado. University of New Mexico Press, Albuquerque. Hammond, George P. and Agapito Ray, 1920 Narratives of the Coronado Expedition 1540-1542. University of New Mexico Press, Albuquerque Reprint by AMS Press, New York, 1977. Hammond, George P. and Agapito Ray, eds. 1940 Narratives of the Coronado Expedition, 1540-1542. Coronado Centennial Publications, 1540-1940, Volume 2. Albuquerque, University of New Mexico Press, Albuquerque. Hori, Emil W. 1984. The Search for Chichiltecal. Arizona Highways 64, 14 to 19. Hedrick, Basil C. 1978. The Location of Corazones. In Across the Chichimic Sea. Ed. C. Riley, Southern Illinois University Press, Carbondale. Herrick, Dennis 2013, Winter of the Metal People, The Untold Story of America's First Indian War, Sunbury Press, Mechanicsburg, PA. Hodge, Frederick W. and Theodore H. Lewis, ed. 1907, Spanish Explorers in the Southern United States, Vol. 2, 1907, XIII, 413p, RPT, Texas State Historical Association, 1985, 411 pages, ISBN 0-87611-066-9, ISBN 0-87611-067-7 PBK. Lee, Betty Graham, 1966 The Eagle Pass Site, an integral part of the province of Chichiltecal. Thatcher, Eastern Arizona College Museum of Anthropology Publication No. 5. Mill, J. P., and V. M. Mills 1969, The Kaikendal Site, a prehistoric Salado village in southeastern Arizona. El Paso Arch. S. O. C. Spec. Report for 1967, No. 6, El Paso. Ref, Daniel T. 1991, Disease, Depopulation and Culture Change in Northwestern New Spain, 1518-1764, University of Utah Press, Salt Lake City. Ref, Daniel T. 1997. The Relevance of Ethnology to the Routing of the Coronado Expedition in Sonora. In the Coronado Expedition to Tierra Nueva, the 1540-1542 route across the southwest pp. 165-176, eds. Richard Flint and Shirley Cushing Flint. University Press of Colorado, Niwot. Sauer, Carl O. 1932, the Road to Cibola. Ibero-Americana III. University of California Press, Berkeley. Schroeder, Albert E. 1955. Fray Marcos de Niza, Coronado and the Yavapai. New Mex. Hist, Rev. 30-265-296, see also 31-24-37.
Seymour, Denny J. 2007. An Archaeological Perspective on the Hohokam Pima Continuum. Old Pueblo Archaeology Bulletin No. 51, December 2007 1-7. Seymour, Denny J. 2008. Despoblado or Athapascan Heartland, a Methodological Perspective on Ancestral Apache Landscape Use in the Safford Area. Chapter 5 in Crossroads of the Southwest, Culture, Ethnicity, and Migration in Arizona's Safford Basin, pp. 121–162, edited by David E. Purcell, Cambridge Scholars Press, New York. Seymour, Denny J. 2009. Evaluating eyewitness accounts of native peoples along the Coronado Trail from the international border to Cibola. New Mexico Historical Review 84, 3, 399 to 435. Seymour, Denny J. 2009. Where the Earth and Sky Are Stitched Together: Sobipori Oedam Contexts of Contact and Colonialism. Book Manuscript. Udall, Stewart S. 1984. In Coronado's Footsteps. Arizona Highways 64, 3. Topic. External links. Topic. The Search for Chichiltical The Journey of Coronado, 1540–1542, from the City of Mexico to the Grand Canyon of the Colorado and the Buffalo Plains of Texas, Kansas and Nebraska, as told by himself and his followers, written by Pedro de Castañeda and translated by George Parker Winship, 1922 publication, searchable copy with page numbers at archive.org Coronado, Misfortune's Explorer Primary Source Adventure, a lesson plan hosted by the Portal to Texas History Coronado Cross June 29, 1541, Ford County, Kays List of men who were part of the Coronado Expedition Encyclopedia of Oklahoma History and Culture, Coronado. Coronado, Francisco Vazquez de Appleton's Encyclopedia of American Biography, 1900